Welcome to being reintegrated. So this is pretty much a vanity episode. Um, thank you so much for subscribing to Being Reintegrated where you get exercises on the actual process of uh, development, working toward your uh, you know, superior unknown initiation, I should say. Um, in the presence of the light of lights. Uh, so anyway, um, I wanted to talk about the names of the Elu Cohen. Uh, I hate to say this, but, um, you know, I've been, as you all know, I've been transcribing and translating to the best of my ability. Uh, people can help, of course. The three volume of George Quartz's, uh, manuscript of Algiers. So there's two sources that I have. One is George Quartz who says that the names and the rituals of the resurgence um, of the Elu Cohen, uh, that includes Ambulane and even Amadou, are arbitrary in the sense that they are uniquely specified to the operator uh, and to the day that they operate. So that's one thing that should be known that these rituals, if you have gotten them uh, or received them, <laughs> uh, they are null and void um, because they were done for the person on that day with their particular understanding of the system and uh, as they were gravitated toward the names. So, this is one of the big things in the Elu Cohen. Everyone believes that it's not only the diagrams, but it's the names that make everything so amazing. So, the diagrams are pretty much the form of what you need to do. But the names in the diagrams are unique to the individual who's operating. So essentially what you have, if I were to do an operation on today's Saturday, um, I would have to use the angels for Saturday under the particular thing I'm doing. So, you know, my teacher uh, in all of these kind of esoteric things is uh, Christine Payne Taller. And, uh, you know, she was initiated in the old way where you go to the Elu Cohen, you do a ritual uh, that's personal based on your own prayer work, your own motivational factors, and then you get initiated into uh, levels of practice. The first one, of course, is the pedagogical blue degrees. Um, now those I saw uh, a grandmaster do, and it was particularly true. The, the name and the ritual had to be taken from uh, the secret instructions, and we were able to determine what day it was and what the name should be. So in that sense, the entire ritual was directed toward a name um, that was for that day. So it's very important to know that because right with the blue band, you get this. And then, um, you know, in the, in the black band, the fourth degree, uh, you get an understanding. Now, some have turned that into a Crowley-esque uh, ritual, but... You know, it, it doesn't have to be. It's not based on any particular naming convention. Uh, the point is, is that, uh, you know, the name that you're using are unique to you. Um, and then going on and on and on into the red band where you get your ordinations. Uh, the green band where you're assisting in the ordinations of others and you're getting your actual uh, familiarity with the directions uh, in your equinox operation. And then in the Roquois, uh, 
you are actually able to do your ritual that is unique to you. Uh, and I and I keep saying that. And there's two sources. First is is George Quartz, who transcribed and did the work of um, getting available the Green Book. So the one you see from Wages, the one you see from uh, Clayland, and the one you see from Osborne is a light version of the Green Book. Uh, the actual Green Book is three volumes uh, with commentary, and it has some areas that aren't included in the Green Book. Um, we'll just leave it at that. And you'll have to read George Quartz's French version to understand what's not in the green book uh, that's necessary for the rituals in the green book so you have that um, the next thing you have is a uh, is a ritual structure now the ritual structure is usually pretty easy adaptable to the individual doing it except for the names the names and the powers of the ritual have to be particularly attuned to the individual doing it. Um, so this goes to show that theoretically you could use Serge Callier's book, uh, which some have done, and uh, you can go through the operations. Now you won't have the prayers, but the truth is, is that um, some of those in the red band don't even have original materials. If you read Serge Callier, there's lost prayers to the red band uh, degrees that are not available. Um, they haven't found them at the BML yet, Bibliothèque Municipale Lyons, uh, and they won't be findable. They're they're buried somewhere, some way. Uh, they haven't been found, and all of the researchers and I can't think of the word uh, excavators of you know the treasures of these libraries um, you have these archaeological basic diggers into the materials and um, they haven't found them yet so I think with the least important uh, stuff of the yellow Cohen being sent around uh, we're gonna get into an age where it just doesn't live anymore so, thank you for supporting being reintegrated. The other part is, is I personally messaged a question. Uh, and if you know the right question, you can get a pretty good answer about this stuff. Anyway, I personally messaged an authority who has viewed the actual core documents of these rituals that are called the Hermet documents. H-E-R-M-E-T-E. And I asked him, hey, what are the names of these 2,400, you know, what are the names of the individual entities on the rituals themselves? And uh, I'm saying this to the world. It's from an authority who's read the actual documents in French. And uh, sad to say, there are no names. In the areas of the document, which is the ritual instructions for the high degrees of the Yellow Cohen, there are no names. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. You can't, um, you can't pretend that you know what you're talking about if you don't know what you're talking about. So the process is primarily for the individual to do the work of coming up with a personal ritual and uh, the practices that are in that personal ritual. It's not a one and done kind of thing, although it's very powerful and can bring into your life what uh, Remy Boyer called uh, the angel of reversal, which I recently found is by, uh, I'm gonna mess the name up here, let me find it real quick. It's uh, Jean Cantines. I haven't even heard of this name. So translating George Quartz's book in uh, French to English so it's readable, so I understand it. Uh, we're getting these areas. 
of demarcation. Also, uh, the Kohen is a priestly group of teachings. However, it's not just priestcraft. It's a special kind of craft to the priest. So it's not just practicing the, you know, uh, the ritual of the Eucharist uh, and, and claiming to yourself that you can just call on general entities to do your work. Now, I've looked over the rituals of many organizations, and that's exactly what they do. They say, oh, this powerful purificatory thing calling on the archangels. That's not quite what the Yellow Cohen had in mind. In fact, the personal ritual was to get you to understand the entire taxonomy of Martinez's uh, uh, universal table which I'll show over there. Uh, this universal table is a special version, which uh, I'm showing because my friend made it an illustrator and it was never originally used. Um, another version was used, but I just love this one because this one has the central axis fire spirits. Um, so we are doing much more than the individual can do themselves. The individual is getting back their individual powers, which are available to everyone. And, uh, you know, in the blue band, they talk about the loss of our original powers and the kicking out of our divine estate in the center. You know, as we occupy the only power that we're able to have, we lose the access to the center where we had all our powers and virtues. Uh, so this book is amazing. George Quartz is amazing. It's uh, teaching me some of the Cohenized version of the Zerubbabel myth, um, which is, of course, Zerubbabel goes to Mesopotamia, I believe. It could be Persia, uh, but they're kind of, the, or Babylon, uh, and sees... Uh, uh, a king and that king had a dream and he says hey Zerubbabel initiate me into these secrets and Zerubbabel says whoa man you haven't gone through the Masonic degrees and Cyrus says you know I've had visions and Zerubbabel agrees to give him initiation and for this initiation he is then able to make passage back into Jerusalem uh as an exile from his land and you know the story uh ldp liberté de penser or pensoir or whatever you want to call it uh you know liberty of thought or liberty of passage uh that's what the ldp is so um <clears throat> the, there there is a level of nuance there because when you do the sign of the grand Zerubbabel sign in the Elu Cohen, you, uh, you become a magi of the realms of the above and the realms of the below. Essentially, you are an Aleph and you, uh, you know, you put one hand up and one hand down. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Um, as depicted in the Magician card of the Tarot, this Aleph is able to bridge in the Universal Table the, um, the actual realms which are talked about, which you'll see over there, uh, the realms that are talked about. These spiritual forces are brought into the magnified energetic circle that you're operating in the high grades of the Yalu Cohen. So you got to know all this in order to do all this. It's not, you don't just get to say, oh, I'm a priest and forever after the order of Melchizedek, I'll practice the Eucharist and now I'm, you know, a Roqua. That's not the way it works. You can't do that. You have to develop a personal ritual in which you charge your personal ritual with your understanding of your personal ritual components. And then you're able to make your petition uh, to the powers that may be for your original divine powers. I'm letting so much out of the bag here. 
Uh, and I'm going to make this one in the open because I want you all to know that this is not a wares trading kind of group. I, I've been passionate about the Elu Cohen for 20 years. Uh, and finally, we're going to restore it back to what it originally was. To Martinez, not to his detractors, not to the reimaginers, not to the resurgent orders of the Elu Cohen, but originally what Martinez intended it to be which is a personal operation for the individual with understanding of the taxonomy of Martinez's uh, universal table, as well as the spirits that correspond to that universal table and the dynamics that are involved therein. So there's quite a, a road ahead if you're interested in that. I don't know if we're going to get there completely. I'll lead you up to the gates, but you got to knock on the door. You got to work with the thing yourself. Um, you know, I can't, I can't do a ritual for you because as you see, it's highly personal. Um, the ritual that you do to integrate back your powers that you lost uh, because we're not activated in those powers and we're not working from them um is very personal so i'll say that that's kind of the last time i'll mark that point but um it's personal and there are benedictions uh you know my treaties of benedictions uh translated by gpt uh in the cohen instructions of san martin uh which you will see san martin's view on these prayers on these blessings um, there's, there's much nuance to go over, but I can't possibly do it in one video, um, because it took three, five and seven year periods of time in succession for postulants for the Roquois to be able to make their petition. So there's a three year education. There's a five year education and there's a seven year education. This is not something that a young guy can just go into and say, oh, I'm thus and thus and so and so and now I have all my certificates and I'm the leader of the pack. Um, you can't do that. It takes a long time to learn to develop your power um, because we have one power left, this creative power which we have, this creativity that I've talked about on other things uh, or other videos, uh, you'll see is operated in the Elu Cohen. So all of this is designed to get you back into your original powers, um, which I've analyzed all the materials there are. And I uh, am now able to help you get to where you're going. So we will be doing probably a retreat in 2028 uh, to come and do the Roqua ritual. Um, it will be sponsored by publisher uh, and the uh, sponsor of being reintegrated, uh, Noria Brownfield. Um, and we will offer not only this uh, Roqua initiation with your particular uh, work uh, taken in mind. And once you've done the purificatory work that needs to be done and the prayer cycle and you get your powers, um, then you can somewhat go in and do the operations of the high grades. So we will be offering in a few years a... Uh, a like bed and breakfast kind of weekend long retreat to do this um you'll pay for your own lodging you'll pay for your own transportation and then a small fee for the ritual work that needs to be done since it requires the rental of a location um because it's it's quite elaborate so for the first time in history we're going to reproduce the Roqua as it was made in the early 18th century. Uh, and I can't wait for you all to get involved because um, Ivan Mosca put the order to sleep. But because uh, 
bishops are saying now we can revive the order. Uh, the bishop uh, that I am working under as a priest um, has given permission to revive this kind of craft. So I will be working personally in translation and perpetuation of this system. Um, you know, come back to being reintegrated because you're going to have to have a knowledge of all this stuff in order to get to that area. It's a private retreat offered to people who are willing to go through the work. It's not Masonic, um, but you have to have a knowledge of it. I'm not going to quiz you, but you're going to have to have a knowledge of what you're talking about. And fortunately, we'll be able to tell where you're at in the process and what you've done and give you purificatory things that you can do in order to um, reclaim your birthright, if this is something that interests you. So anyway, that's something that comes down the pike after the translation of the George Court's volumes, then will be the reconstruction of the Roquois. The Roquois, as reconstructed, will be offered on a retreat basis, uh, and then we'll have like a lecture period where you'll be able to hear the treaties of reintegration in relationship to the high degree rights that you're going through. So I'm very excited to practice this um, with everyone. Like I said, the cost is minimal. We just need to cover the cost of the rent of the location. And then you'll pay for your individual transportation and lodging uh, into the Pacific Northwest of Washington, where we will have the first uh, initiation into Roquois since the 1950s. The real one. Not some fake pseudo Roquois that you get a certificate at. Um, but one that's specifically designed for you with a coach that will give you, when you're ready, the proper keys to open up the ritual for yourself. So more on that soon, uh, but thank you so much for supporting Being Reintegrated. The work of uh, the restoration of the Elu Cohen, and uh, again, thank you for being... Uh, loyal viewers, and I hope to talk to you soon.